All right, just before I get started, I want people to understand and keep an open mind. I freaking love Bill Nye. He made science look so fun, he had an entertaining program and all, but all that is pretty much in the 90s. And as far as who I like better, Ken Ham or Bill Nye, I kind of hold them in the same regard, with Ken Ham just being a little bit higher because he preaches the truth about creation science and the truth about God's word. And the thing with Bill Nye, yes I like the guy, but you gotta learn early in life to eat the meat and spit out the bones. In this debate, both didn't really seem to answer each other's questions, but I also think that Ken Ham wasn't given a fair amount of time to actually answer these supposed ad hominem attacks from Bill Nye of these supposed evidences for evolution, which, bringing up these fallible assumptions, Coven already addressed all of these like 10 years ago in his Age of the Earth seminar. I could be proving for days that his points from his seminar in are in fact valid. Bill Nye kept bringing up the thing about the ice cores, the tree rings, the wooden ship, and the sedimentary layers. I mean, don't you think it's about time they updated their textbooks? I mean, evolution has been proved wrong over 50 years ago, spontaneous generation proven wrong over 200 years ago by Louis Pasteur and Francesco Reddy, but it still remains in the textbooks, and that's what I have the problem with. Did you know that Clarence Darrow and Charles Darwin both said, it's best to hear both sides of the argument, otherwise the nation will just only be a one mind and one opinion, and people won't be able to learn for themselves. That's what Charles Darwin and Clarence Darrow said. Bill and I seem to be like, oh, the sky is falling, uh, we got to get more evolution into the schools or we're all going to die, all the world will be destroyed if we don't teach evolution. <laughs> he somehow thinks that his religion of evolutionism is important to the scientific community, and it's not. And another thing. Bill Nye makes the remarks that if there's evidence for creation, then please show me. It will be embraced with open arms. No, I have to disagree. Through much unfair bias and discrimination, evidence for creation has been totally put off to the side and never been used. Uh, totally discriminated. Uh, totally hidden and totally denied and everything. See, evolution is not part of science. It's a religion, and they totally defend their worldview with religious fervor and zeal. If it was real science, it would be open to all observations, but they totally, willingly discredit inf any information that goes against their theory. He'd like to keep saying, oh, there are many religions out there. Well, so what? Most of these religions are completely unscientific, where the Bible is scientific. Did you know it's because of Bible-believing Christians that we have the modern benefits of many branches of science today? Isaac Newton, Johannes Kepler, James Clerk Waxwell, and Raymond Dominion, the guy who invented the MRI. You know, they people can understand if they're taught that God created the world, that means there are laws that exist. And by studying these laws, you can have the confidence that you can find out about new things. Teaching a bunch of kids evolution just might them make them feel depressed or they might want to go off and do other things. You cannot be too optimistic about children wanting to be more scientifically advanced if you're just going to be teaching them evolution. For the next 50 years, if all you did was just teaching them evolution, you can get anywhere in scientific advancement. Okay, Bill Nye brought up the thing about the ice core layers. Well, Bill Nye, those are not annual rings. You're assuming those are annual rings. That doesn't represent summer, winter, summer, winter. It represents warm, cold, warm, cold, warm, cold. You can get five of those in one week around here. And perhaps a lot of people to this day have not heard about the Lost Squadron, uh, one of those World War II airplanes that landed in Greenland, and there were over 250 feet of ice in 48 years, which accumulates for only about five and a half feet a year. And with rocks, people are just totally guessing out of the clear blue sky of how old rocks are. See, the geologic column was invented by people right out of the th clear blue sky before there was rubidium strontium dating, radiocarbon dating. Also, none of those dating methods really work, okay? But it's all based on fallible opinions and assumptions. When known ages of some living organisms are tested, we know it does not work. But when you test a sample of unknown age, it's assumed to work. That's not science. Noah and the people back then, I think ancient man was much smarter than we are today. People tried to say, oh, this wooden ship would have twisted and burned. Perhaps pre-flood people, pre-flood animals, and pre-flood plants were much bigger than we are today, and pre-flood wood was especially strong. And God didn't tell Noah, hey, build any boat you like. No, he gave him precise directions that how big it was supposed to be, how wide it was supposed to be, and how many floors it was supposed to have. I mean, following God's way is a way, a way to get out of trouble. And 
people are often trying to set up this whole aspect that everyone back then in the past was dumb and I'm smart. Just for the count of evolution is a religion of egotism. Bill Nye also brought up the assumption about starlight. Well, it took a long time to get here, didn't it? Well, scientists have just recently discovered that starlight back in the, f in the past was a hundred times more faster than it, it, than it is now. The question is not how did the starlight get from there to here, but how did the star get from here to there? That's a real question that needs to be put up. Many times in the Bible it says God stretched out the heavens, also tree rings. Oh, what about these uh, trees that are like uh, 9,000 years old, blah, blah, blah. Well, notice that none of these trees are like millions of years old, and all of them are only in the thousands. Did you know that a tree can grow more than one ring a year. It can even be two or three rings a year. Like one guy who creates walking sticks for people said that there were like 14 rings in seven years. That's amazing. The magnetic field of the earth is declining and it's never reversed. It's just the fact that it's declining. There is no evidence that it has reversed, but because of that more radiation from the sun gets in and that actually ages a lot of these artifacts such as rocks or even trees. And you all posting in the comments, trolling and saying, I'm ignorant. Oh, you're ignorant of this. You're ignorant of this. No, I'm not ignorant. I'm trying to find out, find out the facts. I'm finally going to show this to you people. It's a bold thing I'm going to do. This is real ignorance. G.K. Chesterton said, if there were no God, there would be no atheists. I think that's precisely true. I'm going to be sticking this up up here so you guys can see this for yourself and understand something. And Bill and I brought up the sedimentary layers. Well, petrification does not take a long time to petrify. Petrify Petrification does not take long. There are petrified trees running through these multiple layers, connecting all of them. Sometimes these trees are found upside down. Now you have a real problem. This is dirt that got rearranged at the flood. This is not dirt that took millions of years to deposit on top of each other. And the obvious question should be, where's all this dirt coming from? And Bill and I did not address this, but I just like to bring it up anyway because a lot of people try to accuse us of believing stupid stuff. A unicorn is mentioned in the Bible. Well, the unicorn we're thinking of today is the horse that has a horn coming out of its head. Well, perhaps it was a certain dinosaur because there have been certain dinosaurs found where there have been horns coming out of their heads, and it could be one of those creatures, since those creatures existed and the unicorns we think of in fairy tales did not. What about all those many layers deposited at Mount St. Helens? I bet over 50 years from now, some teacher is going to bring his students to that area and say, see these layers? This took a long time to form. And one of them will say, uh, no, my dad was here. He saw this all happen in just 40 minutes. And Bill Nye, there is a lot of evidence of how dinosaurs have not died out recently, and they're just very rare right now. Particularly ones in the water are still alive, but ones on land are mostly gone because no one wants to live next door to a, to a dragon. And, and that's what they were called through most of history. I've got this, which I'm also planning to hang up there, called 65 million years. Yeah, right. This is dinosaur bones, fresh dinosaur bones and fresh dinosaur uh, tissue and blood that was just recently discovered and just to show that this is not millions of years old and that dinosaurs are still recent and they have always lived with people try to people try to say oh dinosaurs and people together or when the dinosaurs have eaten the people well dinosaurs and people got the exact same size especially before the flood and I think humans always had the superior weapons and I think people were always able to kill these dragons and plus the dragons would have been like you know if you leave them alone they'll leave you alone it wasn't tyrannical like they were in movies, like they tried to show you. Just put all those movies out of your head and try to focus on reality. I also have this picture, which shows how Arthur Grant, a veterinarian student, nearly ran into the Loch Ness monster on his motorcycle at 1.30 in the morning. Just to show how dinosaurs are still alive today. You know, search it up. Search it out for yourself. Don't just inadvertently just buy into all this lies you are spoon-fed in a liberal biased classroom of a pro New World Order school from your childhood, okay? And stop making classification, oh, this is Ken Ham's flood, this is Ken Ham's view. No, I follow the same God that Ken Ham follows, and Bill Nye, you are following a flawed man called Darwin who is not a scientist and made a whole bunch of assumptions based on just looking at a bunch of finches, and this man had an incredibly low IQ. Something like 103 or something, but that's another long story. And I might have to say, when I first saw a picture of Darwin, he looked like the saddest looking man I had ever seen in my life. I thought to myself, okay, whatever this guy believes, I want to have no part of it. So, 
My final comments on this Bill Nye and Ken Ham debate, it was decent. It was worth watching. It, there was a lot of stuff that Ken Ham was able to say that finally got out to the public. I was actually expecting someone to put forth a joke that's saying it looks like two Abraham Lincolns debating each other, but don't get across the idea that Bill Nye has all the facts and Ken Ham is just based on faith. No. They have the same evidence, and Bill Nye is bringing up a lot of mistakes and a lot of assumptions that are still in the textbooks. Ken, Ham, Ken Hovind already dealt with them 10 years ago in his Age of the Earth seminar, and I recommend you check that out. Do not try to say, oh, Ken, Ken Hovind's a co convicted criminal, a tax fraud. No. This innocent man is in jail while criminals go free. In the end, this debate was decent and was a lot of fun to watch. And I want to say, Ken Ham, you did a great job. And Bill Nye, you made your case. And Ken Ham made his case. And neither really, neither side really won. But I will say, it was pretty awesome. So that's all I've got to say for this video. Peace out. Keep thinking. Jesus bless you. And TDFN, ta-da for now.